So when I came here, I was really the only plastic surgeon. So we had an N of one. So the way that I did things, the staff knew there was one preference card in the operating room, and it was fairly simple. I had created the way that I do things through the amalgam of information that I had just described to you, which was tribal knowledge, experience, smattering of evidence base. We then expanded the practice, brought in Sarah, our physician's assistant, uh, Dr. Charlie Foley, another surgeon, and we noticed right off the bat that we did things differently. For the most part, and again, this is about five years ago, is we accept that as being normal, um, that you do it that way and I do it this way, and my patients do great, and well, it's great if your do patients do great, but I think my way is better. Um, we then continued to expand, brought in Dr. Holland, uh, and added another physician's assistant. And what became very clear to me is we now had three different preference cards for everything that we did. We had a bunch of tribal knowledge on how to manage patients that our PAs now had to try to keep straight because it wasn't really written down anywhere. And we didn't really have an adequate way of measuring who was doing what better. How do we know that the process that we're using is the one that's most beneficial to the patients? So I was hired here about five years ago, and uh, at that time it was just Dr. Harmatz who was here. And so we were swamped, just the two of us, trying to take care of everything between the general daily plastic surgery needs and the trauma and everything else. And so we just sort of went about working our butts off all the time. Um, but then we got busy enough that we hired a third plastic surgeon, Dr. Holland, and that made a big difference. Things kind of calmed down, call wasn't so bad, uh, but now it made it more complicated because at the time we had one PA working for us and between the two of us, she didn't have much of a problem like figuring it out pretty quickly, you know, who does what. We all have minor differences in the way we do stuff. And by the time we added a third person, all of a sudden, you know, she's scrambling to go between three people and then trying to figure out, okay, what day is it? Where am I? And whose patient is this? And what does he prefer? What does she prefer? What does Alan prefer? You know, we were using different dressings. We were using different techniques. We had different rules about when you take out staples and sutures and change dressings and what do you do with drains and things like that. And it just became more and more confusing. And one of the issues was also in the OR, then suddenly we had three different sets of rules for the OR staff, and they couldn't keep it straight. You, the staff in the OR is never the same crew. You're always getting different people depending on the day that you're over there. And so it would be frustrating. You'd come in and they'd be like, have things you like never use. So, you know, I can be like, no, get that off of here. I don't use that. And I use this. And they're like, oh, I'm sorry. You know, we can't remember. And then Harmats would come in and be like, what the hell is this stuff? You know, get this off my tray. I, I use this stuff. And Holland would be like, I don't use those. Why are those in my room? So it became a, a more complicated problem. Basically, when I joined the practice two years ago, um, Foley was doing things one way and Harmats was doing things another way. And that was working out for them until I think I got here. And then having three separate protocols for OR staff or office staff um, for other providers got more and more complicated. Um, it was also difficult for us to follow outcomes data when we were all doing something differently. I called a meeting um, and had Sarah Grevin uh, uh, help us with all of this and we all basically agreed, I had them write down on a piece of paper, that for one particular operation, immediate reconstruction, uh, breast, using a tissue expander, that we were going to agree to a certain set of protocols uh, and the way that we manage patients both preoperatively, intraoperatively, and postoperatively. And um, that's going to be on, based on, those protocols are based on information that we had gotten through the literature and then best guesses. Because quite frankly, even that operation, which one would think is very simple, has many, many different variables, some of which we can control, some of which we can't control. So we sat down and said, you know, are there things that we can do that will allow us to streamline what we do, make it easier for the staff around us, and also let us see is it something that we're doing impacting our patients. So for example, if you're doing a breast reconstruction and you get an infection, the question is, where did that infection come from? 
And is it always Foley's patients with infections? Or you know, is it random? Uh, is there something we're doing differently between patients that might be causing an infection? So the variation in practice between the three of us became an obvious problem to us that we couldn't track what we were doing. So we decided to sit down and standardize uh, what we did as much as possible to eliminate variation in technique and style between the three of us to see then we could, if we could track how the patients were doing and then if we could identify any one thing or multiple things that were either helping or hindering patient outcomes. Basically, we sat down and discussed what what our each what each of us were using as an individual protocol, and came to the table with evidence based medicine about why we make these choices and why we why we plan things out the way that we do, and um, were able to come to a consensus on what our steps would be for the protocol, including the pre op, the peri op, what happens in the operating room, and then what happens post operatively. We found right away that it was much easier for the operating room staff. They appreciated that they had one setup to do, and it wasn't a question of you know whose stuff we were going to use this time. It's one straightforward setup. So I think it streamlines care, um, also from um, an efficiency standpoint, to kind of know what you're going to get when you get a breast reconstruction at this hospital. It's going to be you know the same same way every time. We now have one preference card in the operating room. It makes it much simpler for the OR staff to set up, uh, much more efficient. The things that we need to have uh, in the room are in the room. They mix the solutions that we need, and it's the same for every single person. Post-operatively, how we manage them, uh, how we manage the drains. If someone gets evidence that they're starting to develop an infection, what antibiotics that we use. Um, and uh, finally, how we manage them to they get to the second operation, which is where we remove the expander and put in a permanent prosthesis. And even then, we've started to standardize some of how we approach that. Again, there were many different things. So what I think that this leads to ultimately is better care, um, better team coherence and understanding. What is it that we're doing and why are we doing it? Shared mental model, incredibly important to teamwork and ultimately benefits the patient.